go to David Littleproud now, the Nationals leader, joining us from Canberra. Such a big news day. I've got to get your thoughts first, David, on inflation. To la inflation. Labor keeps telling us that they've got the inflation dragon slayed, but at bumping up to 4%, it seems we're really on a, on a lookout now for another interest rate rise. Yeah, they, they failed to address the fundamentals of what's driving it. I mean, people's discretionary spending stopped, but what hasn't stopped is the fact that their fixed costs keep going up. Their energy bill, their gas bills, their food bills, I uh, mean, that which are all intertwined, are uh, going up, and that's keeping inflation higher longer, which means rates are staying higher and putting pressure on the RBA governor. And particularly, when you look at the fact that this government has spent $6.5 billion just from themselves, just from the Commonwealth before the states, on trying to deliver a promise of a $275 reduction in your energy bill uh, that's gone up by over $700. They're only $1,000 out. This is how bad they are. But they're going to flood another tranche of money into the, into, uh, into the economy without addressing the fundamentals. You, you, you can't keep subsidising your way out of this. You can't paper over the cracks. You've actually got to face up to the fundamentals of fixing our energy grid, making sure that you have an energy mix. You don't put all your energy eggs in one basket. You don't have concentration risk. And you do that by making the strong leadership calls that the Nationals and Liberals are with mixing our grid up by having not just uh, coal moving over to nuclear, but having gas and some renewables, but renewables in the right place. And that's what we've said will be the transition in the long term uh, that'll give us that stability, but address the fundamentals. And we've got to start that now. And that's why we've been bold enough to start that conversation now and show the leadership that I think this country is now looking for. Otherwise, not only your, your energy bill is going to start, your food bill is going to stay up, but so too is your mortgage rate. Well, you've taken me to my next topic because I think one of the key fundamental issues that the federal government can tackle uh, inflation on is energy costs, and they're doing the opposite. They're spending more money and pushing uh, prices ever upwards, and as you say, that flows on to everything. So give us your take on the AEMO system plan out today. They say their plan only costs $122 billion to get to net zero. They're not factoring into that costing any of the projects already floated or underway. So there's hundreds of billions of dollars of projects they're not counting already, all the money already spent, all the money that private citizens are having to spend with batteries and solar panels and all the like. So, that, I mean, it's, it's deceptive, uh, deceptive use of the figures, isn't it? When, when can we get from this government a proper figure for the transition to renewables so that we can compare it to your nuclear cost when you give it to us. But even from what we've seen from the CSIRO, I would have thought your nuclear plan is going to come in under $100 billion. Yeah, well, well look, and this is where I think we've asked uh, not only the Prime Minister but Chris Bowen in Parliament this week about what are the costs, the actual genuine costs of their all-renewables approach that doesn't spread our risk. Uh, we'll be up front. We're gonna, that'll be the next tranche of our announcement uh, of what the costs are for, for nuclear. But we already have some of those numbers out uh, for what an oil renewables approach. Uh, and that's from Net Zero Australia undertaken with the help of University of Queensland that's saying it's somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 trillion between now and 2030. And then by 2060, it's somewhere between seven and nine trillion dollars. I can assure you that for the seven locations that we're going to talk about, uh, we'll be a fraction of that and we'll be up front. We're not going to need the 28,000 kilometres of transmission lines that much that hasn't been factored into it because they can't factor it in in their defence because much of these much of these renewable projects haven't been settled because they're away from existing transmission lines. Mm. But what we're saying is we want to put nuclear power plants where existing transmission lines are. But well, just, just, what they're also saying, yeah, just, what they're also saying, I think, is a really important point is they want us to accelerate the renewables program. Those seven communities where we've identified nuclear power plants, they've actually said, we don't agree with you. Our future in regional Australia isn't to be littered with transmission lines and solar panels and wind turbines. They've actually, those seven communities have overwhelmingly said, we want to be part of that future and transition our coal-fired power stations to nuclear power plants uh, so that we have not only jobs, but we have a reliable energy grid and affordable energy prices in the future. And if you look at what the polling showing, that's actually what they're, they're actually supporting nuclear on, not because they're going to get high-paid jobs, but because 
they're energy literate and they know this is good for our country well, and it's better for regional Australia. And everybody we're knows. With our, with our voices. Well, there's two things yeah. everybody knows. That is that we need affordable, reliable energy and they can see what's happening now. Our, our energy systems is in a complete shambles. But to go to your costings, we had the CSIRO put out figures and they said, I think, $16 billion for the first reactor and then maybe... Eight billion for each one after that. So let's make it. Let, let's be generous and make it twenty for the first one, and then ten billion for each of the others. That's only going to get you to eighty billion dollars. Is that the sort of cost you're talking about? Less than a hundred billion dollars, which, as you say, would be a fraction of the cost of the renewables transition. Well, we want to be upfront and clear. It won't be just the first two. We want to make sure that we're clear with the Australian people what a proper energy mix should look like. If you look at countries like Japan. Uh, they're having around 20 to 25 per cent of their grid will be nuclear with gas as well as some renewables. Uh, that is the sort of mix that you want to go down the track of. And we'll be upfront not just about the first two, but about what that overall upfront cost will be. But understand this but that upfront cost can be amortised over somewhere between 80 and 100 years. Not one of Labor's plan that gets amortised over 15 to 20 years and they have to come back and redo it three or four times uh, and giving it to multinationals from overseas that come in, clean up and do it all over again and take their money back to, to the country in which they came from. We're going to say to the Australian people, this is a legacy, a legacy not just for them today and their children, but for their grandchildren. That's how far Peter Dutton and I want to look forward All in right. terms of giving them reliable energy and giving them confidence in having that reliable energy at an affordable price. Well, we await your costings. The sooner the better that we get to see them, but we also demand costings from the government because the plan that they're already halfway down, we haven't had any proper costings on that either. Thanks for joining us, David. I appreciate it. Nationals leader David Littleproud joining us live there from Canberra.